What's up guys? We just finished Pam and Tommy on Hulu and we thought we'd do a review for you guys, so let's talk. What the hell is this? So Pam and Tommy just finished up its eight episode arc on Hulu and we thought we'd give you guys our thoughts on it and how everybody did. So Matt, what did you think of Pam and Tommy? Uh, I actually absolutely loved it. I mean, that must be a common thing on the show. I love almost everything. But I genuinely really, really enjoyed that show. I thought it was great. And I just, I think they nailed the 90s. I think Sebastian Stan nailed Tommy Lee. Uh, what, what was her name? Lily, Lily, Lily James. Lily James nailed Pamela. I think the casting was awesome. I, I loved everything about it. I could rewatch that show over and over. I really, really, I liked it a lot. So yeah, I really liked it a lot too. Um, I don't think I liked it as much as Matt. Matt was raving and hollering about this. That's why I actually watched it. But the show just never got its hooks fully into me. Um, the four leads uh, from Seth Rogen, Nick Offerman, Lily James, and uh, Sebastian Stan, they all killed it. I thought they did a great job. This show was actually developed by um, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, their writing team and everything, and their production team made made the show get rolling back in 2018 so it took a while for us to actually finally see it for a while james franco was linked actually to play tommy lee oh wow which i think he would have did all right but tommy lee's look was perfect for sebastian stan. yeah no he did great yeah, yeah. So, awesome no yeah sebastian stan definitely was uh the highlight of the show him and uh lily james relationship they looked great they did great great acting i really believe that they were tommy lee and pam anderson but it should be noted that pam anderson and tommy lee have no connection to the show uh pam anderson wouldn't sign off off on it but tommy lee did he actually said he supported the show but he wouldn't uh you know give any like notes or anything like that this is based on a 2014 article that's how they're able to uh in rolling stone article that's how they're actually able to make this show yeah because i was curious if then neither of them signed off on it or whatever how they actually made a show about it but i actually learned a lot of things i, I paused and googled a few times about like was that really how the the sex tape got leaked was that really how the tommy treated the contractor like it, a lot of this stuff was all true, and I, I couldn't believe it. I, it was really a learning experience, and it was just a fun ride. I mean, I was of the age of when the sex tape hit. I was, like, just under, like, where it kind of caught my eye, but as I got a little bit older, I watched it, obviously. And, uh, I mean, now it puts it more into perspective, you know? It, to, it was just a sex tape, but now it's not i mean it it makes what the show did for it i think was pretty cool yeah even though pam anderson didn't sign off on it i felt like you felt so bad for her and yeah I, like I, mean, I, I i i assume that's how she probably really felt like no one wants to be like their house got robbed like mm -hmm. was tommy lee a douche if that's truly how it was then yeah tommy lee was a douchebag mm -hmm. but pam anderson and he even said it he's like yeah i might be the worst person in the world but you know, what Pam do? What she do to deserve it. Yep. Yeah, and that's 100% true, and I think that really actually ended up hitting with Seth Rogen's character. Like, Brand, you know, yeah. Yeah, but I love Seth Rogen in this show. Yeah, no, he was great. He did really good. He was very believable. Uh, I just, again, all the scenes of him just going to work and being shit on and finally just snapping. And it's very relatable. Yeah. You yeah, know, like, yeah. Uh, who doesn't want to go up to their boss and just, like, lose their shit on them because they've just been held down and just broke at some point. And he had many scenes where he was a broken man. Yeah. You know, nothing good ever went his way. Nope. Nope. He doesn't I'm... help himself, though, a lot. He makes a lot of dumb decisions. Yeah, I agree. You know. And it's just, it, it's just a nostalgia trip. See, like, VHSs and this is the dawn of the internet and just a lot of cool things. It, it takes place in the mid '90s, and well, actually, that's kind of where my big flaw is with the show. What? It's how it didn't feel like only like it was like the mid '90s. I felt like they had plenty of props in there, and they dressed them up the right way to make it feel like the mid-90s, but tonally, I don't know if they could have put a better filter over the camera to maybe help with that, but the way that Stranger Things feels like the 80s, this didn't feel like the 90s to me. It felt like the 90s, like, cosplaying for, like, now, and it's just uh, like... Yeah, I mean, I guess there's certain things that they might have overlooked or could have done differently, but again, 
in the big picture, I still think no, oh, it was good. It felt like those other uh, FX shows that kind of have like similar docu series, like the OJ show, like or like you know the one that came out last year with the impeachment. Like it has that kind of like the way it's shot. It kind of felt very similar to that. And both those shows, same thing. Totally, they don't feel like the era they're supposed to be in. And that kind of fell short for me here too. Hmm. But the music was great. I definitely could say like I had fun. Definitely that was nostalgic for me uh, when I heard uh, "Heaven Is a Place on Earth" in the first episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a sucker for that song, oh, so yeah, yeah. it really took me that on. I was a, in the club or something. Yeah, yeah, it took me on a journey there. So like plenty of the music. Plus, I'm a big Motley Crue fan, so it's yeah. always cool to see. Uh, I mean, you, they kind of follow the background, Vince Neil and Nikki Sick, and Mix yeah. Mars, but they got some actors to play him, and it was cool, but this is really the Tommy Lee and Pam Anderson show. Right, yeah, that's what it's all about. I mean, we don't want to give away too many spoilers, but, I mean, you probably know about the sex tape. Yeah. So that, that's not a spoiler. Um, but... It's not a very long... What is there, eight episodes? There's eight episodes, and, and they're not all... In, I think actually the longest episode's 55 minutes, yeah, but they get as low as 31. Some of the, like two of them back-to-back -back are like 33 minutes, so it's a pretty quick watch. You can even watch it in uh, uh, one sitting if you're like John, you know? You yeah, know. I pretty much crammed this in to get this... <laughs> I wanted to get it all in before we did the review today. Yeah, but it's a, you can crush it in a weekend, and it's, it's a good watch to watch with your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. So, uh, I mean, it, it's cool to watch. I liked it. I really enjoyed it. I would watch it again. Yeah. I would probably say it's one of the better Hulu originals I've seen that I can think of. Yeah, I mean, as far as Hulu, they don't stick out in my mind as much as, like, Netflix or uh, HBO Now. I feel like those are the two, right? Uh, yeah. HBO Max, rather. I feel like those are the two that right now are really killing it. Mm -hmm. Hulu has some stuff. I know I think that's the channel that has... Uh, Pen fifteen, which I I, yeah, I watched. Yeah, Danielle watches. Yeah, I'm Faith watches that. that too. But they got some shows. But yeah, no, this is definitely a big one for them. Um, I'm I hope it, it nails the landing I, with people because I, I definitely enjoyed it. Like I have some nitpicks here and there, but the four lead actors, uh, Nick Offerman, Seth Rogen, Lily James, and Se um, Sebastian Stan, they they all really nailed it. And they put a, so much effort into it. It's yeah. definitely worth a watch. I don't think it's a badly made show. It just, it never got its hooks into me. I can't say that I loved this show. So, for me, this show is a 7 out of 10. Definitely recommend it. Um, I would have some fun with it. I think you will, too. Yeah, i give it an 8.5 out of 10. I, I really, eh, I'll give it a 9, actually. Go yeah, for I, it. I would say 9 out of 10. <laughs> if you, you know, liked it, you liked it. <laughs> I, lo I love the 90s era. I, I was always a Pam fan when I was a kid. I had posters of her on my wall. Um... Tommy Lee is awesome. I love Motley Crue, Seth Rogen. You know, it, it's what's not to like. It checked you know? all your boxes. Yeah, it like, checked really? all my boxes. It's I, that's it's a docu series. That's what you would consider this. Yeah, it's definitely a docu series. Yeah, but it's, it's like a black comedy. It's docu -series. entertaining. It's entertaining. Yeah. It's funny. It's you know it, it it'll pull on it'll check all the boxes. It'll pull it, your heartstrings sometimes. Very it'll interesting make you laugh. story. Yeah, interesting story. It's yeah. I liked it a lot. Definitely give it a shot. Yeah, no, definitely. So go check out Pam and Tommy. You just finished up all eight episodes on Hulu. And then come on back here and check out more of our videos. And make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe and tell your friends.